Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Everybody is having a reasonable day. Um, I am going to be as succinct as I can, but I want to cover a few things here. You saw the uh, intro. You know by now that we are raising funds to do the work that we do and have done for years. Uh, if you follow me and you believe in the work I do, we need you to support our work. We need you to donate. Uh, I'm just going to leave it at that right now. You know, as a researcher, as a person that uh, pays attention to data at an unbelievably microscopic level, I and I am naturally and professionally wired to pay attention to patterns. Uh, it's what allows me to help uh, the people I help. It's what allows me to find the issues that need to be addressed. Uh, but in doing so, I also pay attention, uh, just like so many others uh, who don't have the interest of black people at heart. Uh, I pay attention to behavior on social media, behavior on the internet, engagement, because it's the most common place that we gather. And we are the most open about how we feel. We're the most open with what we're doing. We're the most open uh, and on social media. And I'm not just talking about blacks. I'm talking about people. We're the most open in these social places because we feel safe because we're not actually in the presence of anyone and we don't realize that this information is being gathered in an unbelievable uh, massive proportions from uh, geoplaning to all other different types of um, data being gathered. Uh, I do a great deal of my research by gathering the data that I can collect online. I can pull my whole uh, Facebook profile, have it downloaded, and then I can categorize it in so many different ways from finance to social gatherings to marriage uh, to violence. I mean, so many different ways. And it allows me to see what my people are doing. It allows me to see what they're doing because I keep up with everybody. Um, and what, what what I do is I pay attention to patterns. And one pattern that is kind of interesting to me is uh, my subscribership. No big deal uh, to me because I'm not here, uh, number one, to be liked. So I don't expect the thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people to flock because we live in a culture where people want to be entertained, and I'm here to tell you the same thing I told you 13 years ago. I'm not here to entertain you. I don't have time to entertain you. But what I notice is when I post something of substance, when I post something prevalent, when I post something that should be at the top of our list of concern, I can actually lose subscribers. It's, it's amazing. Uh, when I post about uh, business opportunities, when I post about opportunities to improve, I could lose subscribership. Where I gain subscribership 
is either when there's an opportunity for divisiveness, which I work very hard not to uh, in encourage, and when we're talking about celebrities or there's a, uh, an opportunity for people to come and vent. Um, we are not interested in learning. We're not interested in growing. But let me tell you why I don't have time to entertain you. Let me tell you why I don't have time to go for the likes and the, the hoopla and the sensationalism. For more than 30 years now, I have been conducting research. To this point, I've conducted almost 80,000 hours of academic and scientific research on everything from, and I've written this stuff down because I want to make sure I made a point. Everything from gentrification, mass incarceration, miseducation, um, uh, general, general, generational trauma, adverse childhood experiences, uh, serial force displacement, the disintegration of the black family, perpetual uh, poverty, um, the assault on black masculinity, intimate partner violence, mental health, mental illness, and suicide, and the list goes on. It's literally a laundry list of things that I have invested my time, my energy, my effort, uh, my skills, my mind, my heart into. Uh, and what I've discovered is there are so many mechanisms at play. There are so many uh, literally constructed and engineered uh, elements and components that disrupt us, distract us, uh, divide us, um, interrupt us. Gentrification is a major issue. It's not only a part of serial force displacement, it go, which goes along with red line and urban renewal, benign neglect. It's also a major interrupter in our in our uh, quest to build wealth. Um, it is not simply an organic happening because it's not happening to anyone else. This is by far. Uh, one of the most pernicious assaults on uh, black economics that you can uh, imagine. Then there's miseducation. And I've written on this in multiple books. I've lectured on it. I've written articles on it. I've offered solutions. We are sitting here trusting them to educate our children. Now, what happens in this, I've talked about the disproportionality of special education referral for young black boys and how that plays out in the long run. When you talk about mass incarceration, you must first look at miseducation. You must look at the fact that they are consistently and early in the process alienating young black males. Uh, they alienate them, number one, through uh, the disproportionate manner in which they refer them for special education assignments. Once given an IEP, then they are treated differently, normally ostracized, normally slapped with a tag of ADHD, oppositional defiant disorder, and a number of other uh, tags that also open them up to be uh, prescribed psychotropic drugs like Ritalin, Vyvanse, Concerta, uh, Nor Norvask, Naderol, uh, just to name a few. Uh, these drugs are all set, uh, Schedule II drugs, meaning highly addictive with very little implications for true medicinal value, but it seems to keep them still and quiet and docile but literally not in the best position to learn. So they go through and they struggle. They are told that they're simply not smart enough. And then what happens at a certain point, they get tired of being ostracized. Get, they get tired of being tagged and they drop out. Now, the problem with dropping out is they don't have the skill set to earn a life wage or a living wage. And so they are put into a situation in which they end up in crime. And so we know by studying, by paying attention to the data that uh, a child who, a, a young male who does not complete high school is five times more likely to be incarcerated. 
We know once incarcerated, they're 72 percent more likely to recidivate, reoffend. And all of this is because of a lack of preparation. I've talked about that. Generational trauma, how it's passed down. I've talked about adverse childhood experiences, which is a part of epigenetics, which is highly uh, integrated into the dynamic of, uh, of multi-generational trauma. I've brought lessons. Um, I've shared how we can change that. I've created interventive processes. The problem is you've got to be able to resource it. you got to be able to put it out there. See, no, I don't have time to entertain. I don't have the time to come up with creative ways to make you laugh, creative ways to get, get you excited. You should be excited about changing your life. You should be excited about changing the life and the future of your progeny and offspring. You should be excited about finally overcoming this push to consistently hold you and your people down. That should be something inside of you that's driving you to understand that it's not going to be the Louis Vuitton bag or the Mercedes Benz that's going to take you to the next level. It's going to be an awareness of what's going on and how they are using you. And then, uh, to finance your own demise. We're constantly at living at the level, uh, at, at, right at the poverty line. The median household wealth for whites is 177,000. The median household wealth for blacks is 17. It can be even lower in some studies, but, but that wealth gap is a representation of the gap in power, the gap in fluidity, the, gla the gap in mobility, the gap in freedom and liberation, why we have to ask for them, them for everything instead of being able to facilitate and create our own. There is a responsibility that is innate uh, and inherent and, 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 and it's inescapable no matter how much you avoid it no matter how much you try to skirt it we are responsible for our outcomes we are responsible for our destiny we are responsible for the things that we should be doing to make the lives of our families better sitting up and go to the movies go to the sports games but you've got to commit a certain level of your attention to solutions you've got to commit a certain level of your attention to being a part of contributing to agendas and protocols and blueprints and plans that there are some things you can't fund your way out of oppression you can't dance your way out of oppression i don't have time to entertain you We have a problem. And these things that I mentioned, the assault on black masculinity, it's full blown. And I'm not even talking about uh, homosexuality. I'm talking about the feminization of the black male image. I'm talking about the ripping away of the voice of the black man. I'm talking about uh, labeling anything that has to do with true, strong black manhood as being toxic. Second leading cause of death among young black females is intimate partner homicide. Been talking about that for a while. I created a problem to deal with African American adolescent and young adult male violence. This stuff is just go back and look all the stuff I'm talking about is stuff that I've been going hard in the paint on for years. African American, African -American adolescent and young adult male violence. One of the most powerful things we can do to mitigate that is create um, proper socialization uh, platforms. Uh, a rite of passage is one of the most powerful ways of socializing a young black male into their ma true masculinity, their true responsibility, the true nature, what they were designed to do as men, to be good husbands, good, good fathers, good stewards and protectors of the community. That's responsibility. And not only does this socialization, which I created 
uh, black men lead to be, not only does it reduce the proclivity to uh, commit violence, it increases their uh, opportunity and chance of graduating high school, which reduces their risk of incarceration, which reduces their risk of not being able to be uh, amply and adequately employed. It also increases the chance of them owning their own business or becoming uh, gainfully employed and well paid. But just having the knowledge isn't good enough. Just sitting up and talking about it on social media isn't good enough. I've had to go hard in the paint. I've had to work. I have young men dropped on my uh, step, and I'm, I'm, I'm using step metaphorically, but in front of me daily. Nobody's getting behind the program. So they either get help or they don't. Same thing with young black females who are uh, the survivors of childhood sexual abuse, many times incest. All of these are real problems. And we, 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 we have mastered escapism, so we run from it, we hide from it, we pretend it doesn't exist. We grab our little trinkets and things and, and we use that to suggest that we've arrived, that we are successful, but we are suffering in mass numbers. We have a lot of work to do. So excuse me if I don't have time to entertain you. It amazes me at the level and in, in intensity we are willing to complain while exhibiting very little interest in taking action. You know, uh, I I have put a lot of time, energy, and effort. I just launched probably one of my greatest labors of love, and that is the Legacy Wealth Academy, uh, uh, which is launching its first, which just launched its first course. The Legacy Wealth Academy will have many courses, uh, which will be accredited. This first course is my labor and love. It took me years to consult, to interview, to research, to learn from the greatest minds in finance. These are the people you look at and you talk about and go, ooh, ah, that do all the crazy stuff that we see that seem to be in places that are unattainable and unimaginable to the average black person. But they started out, most of them, uh, a long way from where they are now and I got them to share with me the path and the path is accessible by anyone but the journey is intensive and it takes discipline and it takes commitment and I am waiting to see how many people are going to be willing to invest I, I put the link in the description box for this class I've given you two ways to join and this is equivalent to a master's course, but it's written to be understood by those who have never attended college. But the level of information you're going to consume and the amount of potential it's going to give you to financially impact your life is minimally a master's course. And as a person who has written curriculums for academic institutions, I'm telling you, this course is that. But just imagine the amount of time that it took. So you got to understand, finance isn't my area of expertise. I've been good at some areas of it. Uh, I can get out. I can make things happen. I can put a business together in a heartbeat. I can make that business make money. I can bring that business to profitability. But I've obviously had some issues with what's going on on the back end. But I learned from them. I've started to change some things. I've watched things grow. It, it takes some discipline. It takes patience. It's taking even me some time to shift. But my thing is, what's important to me about this particular endeavor 
Is this the one place that when I endeavored upon it and when I put it into into action, I wasn't a big fish in this area. I'm not the nowhere close to being the greatest mind in the world of finance. But I talked to them or I emailed them or I got them to submit or I found lectures from them or I found I mean, I've, I've gotten licenses for so much stuff to put into this course because I want my people to have access to it. But what my concern is, is they'll find a way to say they can't afford it. Uh, this is a life changing, life altering bit. And I've put years into it and a lot of money, my money into it. And now I've got it to a point to where it's ready to be consumed. And it's palatable. It's going to take time. It's about an 18 month course, eight sections. But I promise you, it's life changing. But I'm concerned that we won't get it. I've given two ways. You can either pay in full up front and there are some benefits to that goal status. Or you can pay a small down payment. I believe it's four ninety five and you can pay monthly payments for 12 months. But you will immediately have access to the course either way. Now, the status is a different. If you pay payments, that's the bronze status. Certain things you won't have access to, like quarterly access to sessions with me. But you'll get a six month assessment and you'll get a 12 month assessment and you'll still have access to me via email and any other um, trainer or teacher that comes on board to share in their certain area of expertise. But again, it's like everything else. You've got to be willing to participate. I look at some of these things. Uh, a lot of it I, I opened up in my 19th book, Born in Captivity, Psychopathology as a Legacy of Slavery. We talked about so much of this generational trauma, adverse childhood experiences. I've talked t until I'm blue in the face about the disintegration of the black family nucleus and how that destruction of the family has crippled our children. I'm not just sitting around. I have given my heart, my life, my soul to this. So forgive me if I'm not in a mood to entertain. Uh, I see way too much suffering from where I'm sitting, way too much heartache from where I'm sitting way too much poverty from where I'm sitting to be in a mood to entertain when I'm gifted to create change. We've got to do something different. We've got to challenge ourselves in ways that we haven't challenged ourselves before. You know, I hope that you get behind this organization. I hope that you understand what it takes to make this thing happen. We're talking millions and millions and millions of dollars to make something major happen. But we have to start somewhere. I've been grinding on this and I've put a lot. I'm not going to say how much because 90% just come along and say I'm lying. But just go back and look at what I've done. Go back, look. Go to the site and look. Look at what I've done. Look at the things that you can see me doing. And then imagine me doing that consistently. And ask yourself how much it costs. Then ask who paid for it. Because I've been doing this for almost 30 years and I haven't raised $20,000. So who do you think has been doing it? I give much love to people who have been consistent. Uh, starting with uh, Dr. Michael Blanchard, uh, who has been a constant supporter. Neota Yura, who's been a major pusher of my work, uh, syndicating it on many, many platforms. Um, those two people are on my team and have shown me. Uh, Michael Jordan Jr., uh, a very close friend and mentee. And there have been some others who have contributed. But again, it's you put all that together and we still haven't gotten, may not have gotten over 15,000. Last I checked it was, and I'm just guessing maybe it's going over, but it's definitely not reached 20. And so 
the idea that I'm doing this for the money has to be a joke because it costs me way more than I ever get. I'm doing it because it's my passion. I'd have quit if it was the money a long time ago because there's so much more money actually in misguiding black people than it is in helping. That's why you have the Stephen A. Smiths and the Jason Whitlocks and the Steve Harveys and, and all of those others because it's money in that. They want that buffer. They want that person that's going to tell you you know, you stupid for not doing this or send you down a, a dark path leading nowhere, uh, chasing nothing or to get you triggered behind a statement and where you're upset, but not in a position to do anything. But the people who are actually embedded in the work tend to be here, then gone there. You share their stuff, but you'll never look at their sacrifices. How many times have you thought about the sacrifices of a Dr. Amos Wilson, a Dr. Naeem Akbar, a Dr. Francis Chris Will, uh, Will, a Dr. Francis Chris Wilson, a Dr. Khaled Muhammad, a Malcolm X, Martin, Neely Fuller Jr., Chancellor Williams, Dr. Yosef Ben Yakin, and Dr. John Henry Clark. Have you ever stopped and thought? about the sacrifices they made and we'll share that stuff and we'll boast on it but just like the the generation of this time the generation that time didn't get behind them the way they should have if they would have we'd be a further along dr claude anderson oh my god let me not forget him Look, I'm going to get off of here, uh, but I had to say, I'm just looking to watch, you know, and the, the thing is, it's one thing to say, okay, I'm not going to watch the video, but if I post something that is serious in nature or challenging you to do something different, you don't just not watch it. You unsubscribe. That kills me. The, the energy and effort of subscribing and resubscribing to stuff because you in your feelings. Trust me, if you're going to grow, you're going to be in your feelings. Because if you had everything you need to be everything you're supposed to be, you would be there. One of the things that I had to do is I had to put my ego aside when I was building this course. Because there's so much I didn't know. So much I thought I understood that I wasn't even close to understanding. And I had to put my ego aside. I had to get, my, get out my feelings. But the one thing I made up in my mind is, if I live long, God keep me alive, because I'm going to be a beast in this. No, I've done the business thing. I've made the money before. But making the money ain't just, that ain't it. And it, it, it's the, you know, some of us got this unbelievable hustle. Unbelievable creativity. And we keep running. Well, why we keep hitting the wall? Because there's a whole nother level to it. And, but I tell you what. I hope that those who really have a mind for change for our people will see the value in what I do and get behind it. Uh, I don't have time to entertain you. I'm sorry. This isn't going to be sensational. Yes, we will talk about celebrity sometimes, but only when it's a teaching moment, only when it's something to learn. Yeah, I look, everybody's talking. They're ready to talk about what Sierra was wearing. That's between him and his wife. I have an opinion, but my opinion is just that I don't see a teaching moment in it. So I'm not talking about it. Man, they couldn't wait to find something negative about LeBron. Some cat comes out and says that LeBron has the same supplier as he has, and he uses performance enhancing, enhancing drugs. And everybody is ready to jump on it. Nobody's verifying it. Nobody's confirming it. But why? Because we would much rather be on social media tearing each other down than lifting each other up and finding common ground that we can work on and build. And that's not an accident. That's programmed and ingrained in our psyche. It's built into who we are. We need to shake free of that because it's a destructive force that's tearing us up at the very core. We better start embracing the idea of rebuilding.
building the black family or we don't have a chance in hell. This individualism, this selfishness, I, it's about me. It, how is that working out? You look good, you dress good, you're driving good. Life in shambles, kids going, I mean, just going absolutely berserk. But it looks good. You were, and we still in last place. We're still in last place. All that school, all those degrees, still in last place. Still no power. Still can't stop them from killing our kids. We've got work to do. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get off of here. Like I said, if you believe in the work I do, support me. If you're looking to make a change in your life, you want to check this course out. Uh, the link is in the description. The link for all of that is in the links for all of that is in the description box. On that note, I'm going to get out of here for a minute and clear my head. It's been one of those weeks. You guys take care.